lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing all right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, real worked up about a storm that didn't hit us. <laughs> yeah, we dodged a bullet with that one. No, man. we did. You're right. Like, no joke, we dodged a bullet with that one. And I feel for the people in New Orleans and that it, that were that and did west of them. West, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that that got the full wrath, man. Yeah. Um, and people were worked up, man. Like there was a couple of days there where it was it was people were worked up. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, uh, my my income generating. <laughs> <laughs> work that I do, not the work for this podcast. Yeah. Um, my my real job um, relates to that stuff, you know. So um, mm. the owner was sending out updates constantly, and usually I ignore them. Yeah. But but you got me worried about it <laughs> yeah. this time too, and so then I was like looking at them every time, just like stay on course, yeah. just yeah. just stay on course, <laughs> don't take a right turn. Don't right. turn north. Don't turn west or east. Yep. Just just keep going where you're going. <laughs> Sucks for them, but I don't want it to come here. Man, don't want to go through that again. Man. Yeah, it was Sally was bad enough. Sally was bad, and this would have been worse. Um, I mean, the, it was it moving would, faster. That it was moving faster, so it wouldn't have sat on top of us like Sally did. That was the, the real problem with Sally. That was the real problem with Sally. We had but, ninety mile an hour winds for like ten hours. Yeah, I mean, you're Sally, gonna but. you're gonna suffer the consequences of that no matter what. Yeah, <laughs> but but this one it was moving qu- quicker, but it's still man, it would have it would have messed us up. Yeah. Well, you remember? Um, well, you, you'd have probably been pretty young at the time, but do you remember Hurricane Danny? I do remember Danny. Yes. Okay, so like yes. Danny was like barely a hurricane. Mm-hmm. Um, it, most of the time that it sat here, it was like tropical storm force winds, you yeah. know, 40, 45 mile an hour wind gusts, whatever. Yeah. Um, but it sat here for days. Yeah, we lost a, a pecan tree at my parents' house. Only one. They didn't have very many at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but they lost one. That, they only had like three big ones, and one of them went in that storm. Yeah. And it was because like the roots had just like gotten eroded. Like I mean, mm-hmm. there was so much water for so long. Yeah. Um, and those it didn't winds take being a lot sustained all that time yeah. is, is still it. And it did a ton of damage around here. Oh yeah, a ton of damage. I remember that. Um, I was working for the pool system. At the time, and I remember the diving well. Uh, it took us it took us days afterwards to clean out the diving well um, because so many leaves had been had been pushed into the diving well. It's like a twelve foot deep pool, yeah. and there was like like eighteen inches of leaves packed into the bottom oh, of the man. pool, and you couldn't use the vacuum. <laughs> like it wouldn't it just wouldn't it, work because it wouldn't suck them through. Yeah. And actually, uh, first we had to clean out the vacuum system anyway, because uh, it kind of runs all the time. So as leaves had settled, they'd gotten sucked in and it <laughs> and burned and up it, the motor. Yeah. It got, it got, uh, pack, you know, too packed in yeah. anyway. So we had to clean out the vacuum first and then the vacuum wouldn't work on the, on the bottom of the pool <laughs> because it was so thick. And we oh. ended up having to literally dive down with tarps and fill tarps full of leaves Please. and drag them to the surface. Oh, and, God. Oh, man, it was I imagine that was. I imagine that was a workout. <laughs> oh, it was. It was. <laughs> Luckily, I was in really good shape then. Yeah. Um, because, that was like, you know, swimming was all I did practically. Yeah. You know, swim and play basketball. Crazy, yeah. man. But, uh, but yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm certainly... I'm, I'm sorry for the people. There's still people here that fled, even oh, like yeah. New Orleans and so um, forth. There's still we still have well, much refugees telling those, in the area. They're telling those people not to come back yet. Yeah, they don't have power there's, and water. There's and, no reason for yeah. them to come back. They're saying it could be as long as a month before they get power back on in yeah. some of those areas, especially like New Orleans and some areas. Yeah. Well, I imagine um, New Orleans they'll be fairly quick. I, I suspect well, that the problem is like some of the places that it went up through that are so apparently there was populated. a main transformer. Like that's like right next to where the Mississippi River is at. Okay, and it ended up in the Mississippi River, yeah. and they're talking about like that's infrastructure that you can't just replace mm-hmm. on the whim. Like yeah. I mean, it's it's a major made and on it to, seems like they ought to have spare parts in Ohio well, or something. Just send it down the river. What, what what I've heard though is that not on top of like that's major infrastructure that you can't just replace on the whim. Like mm-hmm. they're having trouble getting parts anyway due to su- supply chain issues that are going <laughs> yeah. on right now. Like the trucker shutdown. Yeah, like all uh, of that stuff. I didn't really hear anything about no, it. No, they're but. not talking about the trucker thing at all. But I'm telling you right now, truck. The, there's been a trucker issue for months now, mm-hmm. um, and. Now I heard recently that they're talking about striking the course. I haven't yeah. heard any of that. Well, they of that. were supposed to have 
have, have already had started. A, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Are supposed to be a strike starting on the 31st, I think. Yeah. Um, opposed to vaccine mandates. By yeah. The way. That's, that's what I saw. Mm-hmm. I've heard none of that on mainstream, but I've, I've heard it like on social media and seen it in some places there, some truckers talking about it. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, when, when the truckers are talking about, it, you're kind of getting it from the horse's mouth. So I, t- mm-hmm. I tend to at least put a little faith in that. Yeah. Well, it happened in Australia. I know that. Did it? Yeah. yeah. Um, um, but we'll get back around to uh, that topic. Yeah, COVID <laughs> later. Um, right. Push but it to the end is, for the people that don't want to hear that over and over and over. Yeah, again. I, I get that. Yeah. But um, but that storm really did some damage, and it's going to have some long effects for those people. And I mean, even all the way up into um, New England, like it's mm-hmm. really, it's still like like they had massive flooding in yeah, New, New York, a lot of rain, um, and stuff. And so the media coverage of that has. Can you take a guess what the media coverage has been of that? Climate change. You got it, buddy. One try. Like, All right. Yep. Yep. That's that's been the that's been the thing they have been harping on about this, and and it's a severe storm. I get it. I just find it. I'm not sold. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, we should come back around to climate change on an episode. On the episode, we should. So I've got a really good clip, like a really, really? good clip for for yeah. climate change that I've been saving. Because yeah. it doesn't go bad because it's talking about climate a yeah. hundred thousand years ago or something, you know. Yeah. But uh, anyway, we'll yeah. do an episode on climate change because that's definitely something we could spend some time on. Yeah, they haven't shifted the COVID thing into climate change just yet. So there's, I think that shifts in the works though. Oh, um, it is. I've definitely seen some signs. Yeah, um, that'll be. And and in fact, occasionally you'll still hear. Um, it come up that we wouldn't have the problem, you know, the disease is a side effect of climate change. This, you know, <laughs> this global pandemic thing is because of climate change. Yeah. Whatever. Cause you know, there wasn't any kind of infectious diseases before, <laughs> before now, right? Um, before the industrial revolution. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, um, you know, as long as we're talking about, um, I guess employee issues. Yeah. Um, I, saw a report uh, recently that Delta was adding a $200 a month surcharge. Now, I, I should have looked more into it. I wrote it down as surcharge, so, <laughs> you know, that that suggests some things that may not be entirely accurate about this. Um, but that's what I wrote down, and I choose my words pretty carefully, so I... I yeah, it must have been know, in yeah. what you were reading or saw Yeah, it somewhere. was something I heard, actually. It yeah. was um, listening to a report, but uh, and I was in the car... Yeah. But I made a mental note of it as surcharge. Anyway, doesn't yeah. matter. Um, well, it may have been billed as a surcharge because yeah. because that's like that anyway. can be good propaganda. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's an additional charge for health insurance or health care um, mm-hmm. to uh, employees that are unvaccinated. Yeah. Um, and the you know what they're claiming is, is that each employee hospitalized for COVID cost the company about fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. And that's why they're adding this this additional charge. Uh, on the monthly fees for employees that yeah. um, that don't get vaccinated, it's pretty substantial. Yeah, yeah, like, it I is. Mean, that's a, I mean, extra. You're talking about a month, right? Yeah, extra two hundred dollars a month. Yeah, that's your two hundred dollars a month. That's something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I ain't got that to shell out. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, twenty five. Well, twenty four hundred dollars a year. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it it definitely can. You know, after the government takes their bit too, then <laughs> All right. I think most of those people do reasonably well working for the airlines because they're yeah. government subsidized again. But yeah. Um. Anyway, actually, I think this is a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think this is a great idea. I think we should do this for all kinds of things. Yeah. Um, there should be, uh, you know, body fat measurements and, uh, you know, employees that are overweight, they should get an extra charge per month because, you know, their <laughs> health care costs are driving up the prices for everybody else. Well, they already um, do this for smokers. Like they've, they've, sure, they've sure. been doing this for smokers for a long time as a mm-hmm. former smoker. I know yeah, <laughs> because I've, I've played this cat and mouse game with them mm-hmm. about this before. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So here's a good one. Yeah. Young women. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, there should be an extra charge for young women, um, mm-hmm. for their health care because, you know, if they get pregnant, 
it costs tens of thousands of dollars for delivery and so forth. Also, they have to find somebody to replace them during the time that they're out, a couple of months roughly. Yeah. Um, and of course, they'll be out a lot more, most likely after they have the baby than they were before they had the baby too. Yeah. So you have to fill in for them all the time. So, um, so yeah, let's 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 start adding this charge for so young women. So we could give too. them like a discount, like if they have if they're on birth control. Well, it doesn't always work, as you well know. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, so a discount for if you get a hysterectomy. Yeah, maybe. Like that, I mean, that's that's permanent. <laughs> yeah, that's permanent. <laughs> like, um, and that's the most effective form. <laughs> you know, uh, tubes tied that can be reversed, but it that is a surgical be. procedure. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've known people that's gotten pregnant with the tubes tied though. So oh, I mean, that it, sucks. It does happen. Like yeah. I mean, it's it's rare. Well, yeah. I mean, it doesn't take out all the apparatus. It's exactly. Just, you know, but yeah. it usually results in really severe complications since the the egg can't move down the fallopian tubes into the uterus, right? Like, doesn't yeah. it usually end up being an ectopic well, they, pregnancy? They have and to they, do like a C-section or something. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, I mean, I don't know. I yeah. I ain't gotten that deep in the weeds. I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, yeah. So, um, so how do you think people would feel about that? Yeah, imagine not good. <laughs> yeah, imagine that's not going to be a popular. But, but there's there is a push now to like, I mean, people don't really, they view for whatever reason this COVID thing in a different light. Mm -hmm. Like they they, uh, and not everybody, but a lot of people, the people that are bought into this, mm -hmm. just view it as a different thing. They don't they don't see it through the lens of like what me and you were talking about, you know, yeah. where you can apply these same standards to all kinds of other things. Mm -hmm. They just kind of operate on this assumption that, well, this is different. We ha this is what we have to do to handle the situation. Yeah. And, and we look at this and we're like, man, we're going down like a, a crazy road here, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, it, it's absolutely, I don't know. Um, do you start doing the same thing for people that don't decide not to get the flu shot? Yeah. Uh, what about hepatitis? Um, I mean, there's, you know, are you willing to let your employer run your entire life or your entire healthcare life Yeah. or anybody, the yeah. government, anybody else? Shouldn't yeah. all these healthcare decisions be your own decision? Yeah. Um, you know, this, what we're talking about here really is a, it, this is a fight over bodily autonomy. And yeah. it's funny that, you know, that the left has generally been advocates for bodily autonomy, specifically with regard to um, drug use and abortions, yeah. for a long, long time. Yet suddenly, yeah. on this one, they're on the other side. Not all, but a lot, though. You know, the the yeah, the general trend is that the left is yeah. on board with this kind of stuff, and the the right is against it. Yeah. Although there's plenty of right that are on board with it, and there's quite a few left that I are mean, against there's some, it too. There's but some, yeah, um, overlap, but. Yeah, I mean the the point being here that what we're what we're fighting over is bodily on autonomy, the the ability to make your own decisions about your own life and your own body mm -hmm. and your own healthcare decisions and what you put into it and what you take out of it and what you do with it. These these are things. These are the most personal things. Yeah. Well, and I would the same thing I said on the last podcast. Like, look ten years down the road. Mm -hmm. Like, we start making these. Um, letting these things go now, like it's not going to just stop. Mm -hmm. Like it's not going to be like, well, this is as far as it goes. Like the whole slippery slope thing is a thing for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, it, the more we let go, the more that's going to happen. And we don't, I, I, I'll say it again. We don't want to look back 10 years from now and be like, wow, we could have mm -hmm. stopped this then. Yeah. You what know. what's the expression? Give an inch, lose a yard, or something. Yeah, I don't know. yeah, no, and it, but it's true though, mm -hmm. especially when you're talking about governments and in this case, even corporations. Well, I, I have said before that I think that the corporations are mostly responding to government, government. pressure. I agree. Um, and if not government pressure, then uh, insurance pressure, which is also responding to government pressure. Yeah, it all eventually goes back to the same mm -hmm. source. Yeah, you know. Um, you want to totally shift gears? Yeah. I mean, I, I just thought that that was an interesting thing to bring up because it, and actually before we move on, um, I, I think that I would also like to include, uh, considerations for the fourth amendment, um, which is the, is the personal privacy, um, amendment. Yeah. And all of these places that are demanding all these businesses that are demanding your vaccine status. Yeah. This is a, 
the government absolutely is prohibited from doing this. Yeah. Um, they're doing it anyway. Yeah, they are. <laughs> uh, and, and they're using, and this is another one of those themes that I, I hope is, comes up enough on this show that people are aware of. Um, this is another one of those situations where um, the government is using private industry to do things that they're strictly forbidden from doing. Yeah. A lot of those things they do anyway on their own, but, um, but there are some of these things and privacy is one of the big ones yeah. uh, that the government um, uses private industry to do what it can't do because of the fourth amendment. Yeah. Well, I still want to see a case where they really force this deal about um, w making you answer whether or not you've had the vaccine or not. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, that you shouldn't have to disclose that. And, I mean, people should just stick to their guns and not answer one way or the other. Yeah. Um, just to keep drawing the parallel, um, when you're interviewing a young woman for a job, can you ask her about whether she plans to get pregnant or not? Absolutely not. I mean, you can't like it's you can get in a lot of trouble for that type of thing. OK, um, same thing as far as religious. Like I've got a whole sheet of stuff that you can't <laughs> actually I've got a sheet. And on one side, it's stuff that you can ask. And one side, it's stuff that you can't. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I know what questions to ask. So I always just make sure. To, and, I, you know, I do. I mean, I, I respect those that, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, there's, I respect the fact that there's a bunch of stuff that you just can't it's ask. It's just not people. your business. It's just not the business of the corporation yeah. or the person doing the hiring. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I'm a big, like I say, I respect that. Like, I'm glad that that's there. But there is a sheet of stuff. And that's, you know, there's a bunch of stuff on there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I, I will find it interesting if you can't ask a person what, whether they plan to get pregnant, but you can't ask them if they've had these vaccines. The vaccines, Because yeah. I don't really see it as that much different. It is not. It's no different at all, in my mind. Mm -hmm. um, but the, like I say, that's, that's, that's a situation that we're, we as a society are going to have to handle. Yeah. You know, um, And whether you've gotten the vaccine or not, you should still be on the side of, you know, you should have the choice. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, even if you're a big believer in it and you think that this is the best thing ever, and plenty of people do, plenty of libertarians do, and that's yeah. fine. Like, I don't have, I mean, believe what you want to believe. Uh, I got no problem with it. Mm -hmm. But the idea of trying to force it on people who don't want it is a problem, regardless of what you think of it. Yeah. Yeah, the problem is when, you know, said over and over and over again on this show, um, you can make your own choices about your life. It's not my place to decide what is an appropriate choice for you to make. The problem comes when, and we all have our own positions and our own beliefs and our own opinions about various things. The yeah. problem comes when you try to enforce your opinion, belief, decision onto others. Exactly. Exactly. Um, all right. So now shifting. Gears. All right. Now let's shift. <laughs> uh, Afghanistan. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can't not talk about Afghanistan again. Um, yeah. I, I want to start with this. Uh, any um, any outlet that is pressing that this is all Biden's fault yeah. is has a purely political uh, motive or coverage. Well, um, I got some news for you. As far as the mainstream outlets go, mm -hmm. they're all in that boat. Yeah. Like they're yeah, all. Yeah. And this is not a right or a left leaning media thing. They're, mm -mm. they're all after him. all the media is after him. Um, yeah. we're left, right or in the middle from what I've seen. Yeah. As we said on the last podcast, and it's not to say that he isn't without some blame. I think that he is, you know, that he stands to take some of the blame for this. Um, but most of the blame should be placed on the uh, military coordinators that did not coordinate very well. Yeah. Well, um, I think a, I think a stronger president would have made, would have, would have been in the weeds a little more to make sure that this was a good pullout. Maybe, but I don't have any complaints about his strength on this because I imagine everybody was pushing him in the other direction. I'm sure they were. Um, um, I, I'm actually pretty impressed that he stood that his ground was, on this. That he was able to get it done at all. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm impressed that he was able to get it done at all because I don't think the man's very confident. Um, <laughs> I mean, I just, I don't. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I don't, you know, especially now, I don't think he was ever very confident. And now I really, like in his age, mm -hmm. I think he's extremely incompetent. Yeah. So I, the fact that he was able to get this done is pretty amazing. Yeah. There were some points that I thought that he was a pretty good, I mean, like I've heard some clips and things that 
that show that he was a pretty good politician. Now, whether that's something to be proud of or not is another question, but, um, somebody who was very good at, at, uh, shifting things to seem favorable for him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and especially in speaking to a group of people, like making some kind now he makes these gaffes and he just like, he's stuck there like a deer in headlights, but there was a time where he would make these gaffes and he would quickly, follow it up with something that that, that put things back in line and and yeah. made him seem um you know a like positive he, figure again like he knew so, what he was doing yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um so but those day, those days are gone i don't disagree with that yeah. um w- you know one of the big things that keeps coming up is uh this leaving of equipment and um yeah. And I wanted to talk about this just a little bit because I think that there's there's a few things to say about it um, and some ideas as to why this happened. Yeah. Uh, and you can make your own choices. I came up with four. Right. Um, I, four, I think, good reasons. I mean, not good in the sense that they are they're a good Plausible. reason. But yeah, there you go. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and I'm also going to start this off by saying I'm really not concerned about the Taliban having Black Hawk helicopters. Yeah. Uh, because I think a lot of this heavy equipment that they ended up with yeah. requires a tremendous amount of maintenance to keep running. Yeah. And I don't think that they have the skill to keep these things running for very no. long. Particularly those helicopters. Um, yeah. Just a little bit of reading that I've done has said that those things are just monsters to maintain. Yeah. Um, 12,000 individual parts flying in close formation. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's what I heard. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and and to think that they're going to maintain that stuff. And, and even if they do, they ain't flying them to the U.S. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, they're not a threat to the mainland. I mean, no. you know. Uh, I mean, there was a whole lot of small arms left. But... Man, Afghanistan is lousy with small arms. Oh, That's, yeah. This it doesn't, you know, this is probably stuff that will actually end up being exported. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> but we'll see. But, okay, so first, and I think that this is, this is one of, if not the most likely reason that so much of this equipment was left, yeah. is um, that this whole thing has been a giant gravy train for the military industrial complex for 20 years. Yeah. And if you leave all of that equipment where it is, then you have to buy it again <laughs> when you need when it you again. go <laughs> to the next place. Yeah. And, um, you know, so it's just another way of privatizing public funds. Yeah. Yeah. Pay off for the big. And- yeah. For Lockheed and Boeing and General Dynamics and all of these, yeah. you know, oh, Northrop Grumman and all those guys people. are ecstatic that that stuff is still sitting over there. Oh, yeah. Like like that's like best case scenario for them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, because they'll never be held accountable if it's used against some American somewhere along the way anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, because they didn't leave it there. (laughs) Yeah, well, and also because they're protected anyway. It's not like like the gun manufacturers where there are people talking about that. Like uh, Remington or whatever isn't nearly as big an arms dealer as uh, as Northrop Grumman or um, Lockheed Martin or, you know, something. So, but... They get the focus for whatever reason. Um, all right, two, uh, that there is some kind of under the table deal with the Taliban um, to leave all this equipment with them uh, so they can use it to um, to oppose terrorists within the country, maybe ISIS, Al Qaeda in the country, um, or China, yeah, or Russia, or yeah. Iran, yeah, the next the next empire to come try to. Get end up in the Afghanistan quagmire. We'll yeah. have that much more equipment. Well, to, I, I don't even mean it that way. I mean, yeah. like, to be actively opposing yeah. our quote unquote adversaries. Yeah. Um, you know, causing problems to China, Russia, Iran. Yeah. Um, yeah maybe. You know, the, they're not friendly with any of those oh, yeah. countries anyway. So, yeah. I mean,. Yeah. Maybe this that that it's one's just kind of that's tinfoil hatty, but it's yeah. you know it, it's not something that I would put past the CIA. Oh well, absolutely not. Yeah. yeah. Um, three uh, that, <laughs> and this is the thing that we keep bringing up um, is that all these military planners never thought that they were actually going to have to leave <laughs> Afghanistan anyway, so they never made any plans to remove this equipment. Yeah. Yeah. And then in the the fuster cluck that has come to exist now. It, they can't. Yeah, that is just it's too late. Got to get the people out first now. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then alternatively, and this I don't think is too far-fetched, um, 
Although I think that the last one is probably that along with the um, just having an excuse to buy it again in the future yeah. are probably the most likely reasons. Absolutely. Um, but this one also, uh, that it it was done intentionally to provide a bad image of withdrawal. Yeah. Um, so that you have this excuse as to why you can't end wars in the future. Yeah. Like, look what happens when you withdraw. You yeah. end up leaving all of this equipment to the enemy that you've been fighting all this time. You know, that yeah. kind of thing. No, that's true. Um, well, I'll tell you this. I'm glad they're leaving it over there because I think a worst case scenario for us here at home would then would be them bringing it back home here and giving it to your local police department yeah. and stuff like that and sheriff's department. Like I don't want that stuff in this country. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I, I just don't. Like our police departments do not need that stuff. Yeah. Um. And that if it had left Afghanistan, that's where they don't it need that stuff because they already have it from the wars well, they, over the last twenty years. Yeah. They they do, but they don't need more of it because <laughs> because that's where it would have ended up. Mm-hmm. Like it would, because that's where it always ends up. Yeah, um, you know? yeah, it definitely would have contributed to in even greater militarization of the places if it's not As militarized if it's not enough. Bad enough already, yeah. exactly. Um, so. And of course, that's also been a way that they have cycled equipment around so that they had an excuse to buy more, to buy and more anyway, privatize yeah. public funds. So yeah, leave it in Afghanistan. Let them have it. I'd rather them have it than my local police department have it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm with so. you. Yeah. Um, and then, so another excuse that's been coming up or a reason, uh, you know, another political pawn, um, are the families of soldiers who have died, especially those that died just recently. Yeah. And, um, so, you know, the question becomes, because this is the w- way it's presented is that what do you tell the, uh, family of a soldier now, um, when they're confronting you with the, well, what this means is that my child or whatever, uh, died for nothing. And that's, that's a, I've, I've heard that a lot. I've heard that a lot from people who served over there that, mm-hmm. that came back yeah. that, you know, you know, I fought this war for nothing. Yeah. Um, and what I would say to that is it's not, you're never going to win it anyway. Yeah. Like what, what, well, what would we have gained by staying mm-hmm. and more people dying like what, what would be gained from that? Like yeah. we're not, we were there 20 years. Mm-hmm. We're, we were not winning this war. Yeah. It was, we didn't I mean, have a real goal anyway. Yeah. No, absolutely not. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the, there's no, no sense of stand. I heard something today and I hadn't like verified it, but, um, I guess, uh, yeah, Dave Smith, Dave Smith or Scott Horton, one of them was saying that, that, uh, the Russian or the Soviets, had like 400,000 troops in Afghanistan mm-hmm. at one point. They couldn't win this war with 400,000 troops. And a tremendous amount of air power. And, and they were just, like carpet bombing. Just like, I mean, if you can't win it with that, what would ever make us believe that we could go in there and win this thing with what we were doing? Because we're Americans. Well, I mean, you, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but it ain't going to happen. Like, because we never had, I mean, did we ever have that many troops no. in there? At any point? No. Like, I don't think I, I we think did. we had up to about 150,000. Yeah, like at the height, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, um, well, okay, so this this would be my response. Because, truthfully, I can't understand how it feels no. to have lost somebody close and feel that it was all for naught. Yeah. Um, but what I would say is to those families, actually. Yeah. And say, you know, I like I can't understand this. I like I can't understand what you're feeling. I can't relate, but you can, and just consider what that means going forward. Like, how many more families are you willing to inflict that same feeling on? Yeah. To pursue this, still with no real goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, mean, absolutely. Um, I mean, yeah, for a war that, that at least looks unwinnable, Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe, I I don't know. I just, I, I could, cause just like you said, there was no real goal anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we went in, the goal was to get Osama bin Laden and stop the terrorist. But 20 years later, Osama bin Laden gone. Mm -hmm. Like, what are we doing here? Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, and that, that government, the, the government we were propping up, fell like fell in a matter of days. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, 20 years worth of work to fall in a matter of days. Like, I mean, what, what else could we have done? Yeah. We spent a tremendous amount of money on them. Um, 
And it was, yeah, it, it was never going to stand. Um, mm. And mm. it was only the American presence that kept, that propped up that government at all. And even then, they really only c- controlled areas right around Kabul. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, the major there's capitals. a few, there yeah. were a few other provinces where the, the government that we yeah. put in power there had some control over. But, yeah. um, like... Afghanistan, this is probably the most united, now is probably yeah. the most united Afghanistan has ever been. Yeah. And it'll be interesting and to see. And it's not under Ashraf Ghani. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it'll be interesting to see how it, how they do the next couple of years. Yeah. You know, if they, yeah. but I, I I tell you, man, it's just, it's it's a useless battle, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, and, and this is especially true with Afghanistan, but it's true for all of these countries we're involved in now. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, what, like, we talk about Afghanistan, and Afghanistan is, should be an easy example of a war you can't win. Yeah. Like, well, and now apparently they're picking things up in Somalia. I keep reading really? uh, more about, you know, what's going on in Somalia. And, uh, and then, you know, questions about uh, whether we should get involved with the, um, uh, Ethiopia Eritrea uh, dispute over a sliver of territory between those two countries, and yeah. um, and there's been some threats made yeah. by the U.S. But to me, like it's all for naught, yeah. uh, and it may come down to just like the general philosophy that you catch more flies with honey. Um, yeah. But you know we're competing with. Um, the Chinese who are, uh, using, um, economic, well, they're using bribes essentially, um, you know, to build out infrastructure. They're actually using our old toolbox to, (laughs) you know, trap countries in debt to them and so forth. But, um, but they're using an economic approach to try and, um, and gain influence in areas. Um, and the Russians are, are still exporting, uh, security, but they're exporting security by selling weapons and training and, um, and things like that. Um, we're exporting security, but we're exporting security by literally sending through militarism essentially. Yeah. Yeah. And if, if Afghanistan has proved nothing else, it seems to me that it is at least proved that you can't change a society through militarism. No. You can't make a cultural shift in a, in another country through militarism. Um, and so I would say that the best thing to do um, is to not export troops and so forth is to actually probably the Chinese have the best plan. Yeah. But if you want to change the way a country functions, the way you do it, it seems to me is through trade. Through yeah. trade and communication, you don't isolate them. You make them a part of it, and then bring them into as you, the fold. Yeah, as they as their their world becomes enmeshed with yours, then you can start in ex, uh, you know using a little um, pressure to try and make some changes that you want. And it doesn't have to be a government either. I mean, it can just be a business, like yeah. um, any business that goes into some country in Africa, we'll say, uh, and they're selling a product, and maybe. You know, there's some other products that they have um, that that government th- thinks are immoral or something um, and doesn't want sold in their country. Well, you know, once you've gotten in there and you're providing something that people want and people are buying this product and you want to sell more of your product in there, now you've got the opportunity to say, well, you know, we would like to sell this product, but you have banned it for some absurd reason uh, as far as we're concerned. And we have decided that if we can't sell all our products, we're not going to sell any of our products. Yeah. And then you let the people deal with that. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, and, and that type of approach works much better, especially when you consider like sanctions and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Like that's never going to work. Like you're, yeah. cause you're turning the people against you in yeah. that, in that scenario. Well, and in the Ethiopia Eritrea example, uh, the, the discussion has been, you know, to, um, sanction these countries, but the sanctions don't like equal sanctions don't have equal results yeah. between these two countries. Um, and also, so, okay. So you stop selling arms and so forth to Ethiopia and Eritrea, but, you know, Ethiopia has deals with China and Russia to buy arms anyway. So it's not like you're keeping these things out of there. Yeah. Like you're better off, you're better off staying involved. Yeah. Um, yeah. and, and you're going to have more of an influence in the long term 
And I think in the short term too, but you're going to have more influence in the long term. You're more likely to change a culture by th- exposing them to yours if yours is superior. Yeah. If you truly believe that the American culture is superior, then just it being something that other countries see yeah. should be enough to to, and, to influence in the long term. And I think on some levels, China's kind of, a, us in China are kind of a, an example of that, mm-hmm. you know, because I mean, they China has became more capitalist and their society has became more like ours through exposure. Well, uh, there's certainly, a, so I, I've always said I'm not concerned about China because they're going to experience another cultural revolution yeah. um, at, at some point along the way. Because I don't think the only thing that they have really freed up is their economy. Yeah. Um, they have made their economy uh, a more liberal, freer economy than it was before. Yeah. Um, because the the communist economy could not function. Yeah. It, like, yeah. there was just it no was way. just not going to work. So, yeah. but what you've done now is that you've you've given these people a taste of freedom in in this certain aspect of their lives. Yeah. Um, and they have, uh, well, they have become accustomed. More. Yeah. And I, I think that that in the long term, you can't, you can't give economic freedom without political and social freedom following yeah. at some point. Now we seem to be moving in the other direction. Yeah. Well, yeah. In, They're in moving the one States. direction. Yeah. We're moving away from freedom. <laughs> they, and they may prove me wrong on that. Like we yeah. may see in the long term that actually you can free up an economy without giving people political or social freedom and not have to worry about it. But I don't, I don't think that that can be maintained. Yeah. Um, now in this country, uh, freedoms are being taken away. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and a lot of people are just kind of passively taking it for some reason too, yeah. which I just don't, I just don't understand. But um, I think that there comes a breaking point. Like, I hope that the people that listened to the 4th of July episode um, at least took away what we were trying to, to tell people, which is that this country is less free now than it was when we had a revolution. Yeah, yeah, without question. <laughs> um, so what are we going to do about it? <laughs> yeah, but I, I don't think that the you know the militaristic approach to dealing with other countries, if you're worried about... And, you know, humanitarian concerns just become an excuse yeah. to to do these other things. I, I don't think that our government really cares about humanitarian stuff or they no. would be involved. Well, actually, we prop up these like terrible dictators all over the place as long as they're doing as things that we like. As long as they do what they, we, we want them to do. It's mm-hmm. when they go rogue that we bring in the yeah. big stick. Or we're dependent on them in some way, like Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Um, you know, huge oil exporter and they give it to us cheap. And so, yeah. all right, well, kind of whatever you want. Yeah. Um, but well, we're not, we're not concerned Afghanistan about Afghanistan was Afghanistan. no different. Like the people we were propping up were no better than the Taliban no. on many levels. No. Like, I mean, there, there were differences between the two. Like the evil was different, but they were both evil. Yeah. Like, I mean, neither side was good. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, absolutely true. So, um, you know, the if you're really concerned about humanitarianism, then the way to affect change is by uh, exposure to a better life. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You don't you don't you don't bring freedom with the barrel of a gun. Yeah. It just doesn't make any sense. Well, we yeah, we, we need to probably there's a few other things that we want to cover and there's not much time left. So I think I just close this section with a, uh, a quote from Thomas Jefferson. Um, and, uh, he said, uh, war is an instrument entirely inefficient toward redressing wrong and multiplies instead of indemnifying losses. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it does like that's, yeah, it, it does. Do, it does nothing but harm. Yeah. No, no good comes from it. And I'm not saying there's not reasons to occasionally go. Like, I mean, there, I mean, but none of the, none of the places we're in now are those reasons. Yeah. I mean, I'll say that. Um, so here's a topic that we have somehow managed to not talk about in all this time. That's Cuomo. (laughs) That's right. We have, how did we let him slide under the radar? Uh, Well, because I never (laughs) thought that he would actually get in any trouble. Yeah. (laughs) This is part of it. Um, but, you know, the, the tide shifted, certainly. Um, there's not actually a whole lot that I want to say about this. Um, this just goes along with the, you know, just like the humanitarian thing as an excuse to go to war, this is just another example of how you just cannot trust any of these people. 
no. um, that uh, your government lies to you yeah. constantly, yeah. incessantly. Yeah. Um, and that they're never going to hold themselves accountable for uh, for mistakes of government, only for personal mistakes. So after all of this, Cuomo has been forced out of office because um, he slapped like 12 girls on the butt. Yeah, yeah. Not for killing or being responsible for the deaths of thousands of people in his state through yeah. his actions on COVID. So you can kill grandma all day long, but <laughs> I mean, this is, you know, this is just a, an illustration of how messed up our priorities are in this country. Yeah. Um, or it goes along with, was it, uh, was it Stalin that said, um, you know, if you, uh, if you kill a person, if you're a murderer, if you kill a million, you're a emperor or something like that. I can't oh, remember yeah. exactly you, what that quote is. You but. kill one, you're a murderer or you're a murderer. You kill millions, you're an emperor. Something, something like that. Like that yeah. 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 Um, and uh, yeah. So this is just another example of that. And uh, some things to consider in this, um, this, this stuff, this uh, sexual harassment has been going on reportedly for a very long time. Yeah, it's not something new. Nobody said anything about this until now. Yeah. There were plenty of people who knew that didn't say anything about this until now. So it makes you wonder why now. Yeah. Um, well, we know why now. Because the stuff about what went on in the nursing homes was starting to make some real hay. Yeah. And it was like it, whenever that stuff started coming out, well, there's almost immediately this other stuff started coming out. Mm -hmm. And it was because that's we're not going to have him go down for the COVID stuff. It's going to be this other thing. Yeah. You it's know? it's a distraction. Let, yeah. let me get you looking over here so you stop paying attention to this other thing that was a real crime. Absolutely. And not to say that sexual harassment isn't a real crime. I mean, it is. Although some there's, of the stuff was pretty questionable i think but some of it um, was i mean not all i mean i i, I think the guy's a creep there's no doubt well about that. and that's kind of what i've <laughs> i've said about it all along is that you know the guy was a creep and and i wouldn't want him around any of my daughters yeah <laughs> and things like that but i think very little of what what he done was actually criminal i think there mm -hmm. may have been a couple of instances where there was actually something as far as criminal but most of what it was was just creepy yeah you know, yeah, um, um, which is good as far as for me, as far as like impeachment goes. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, absolutely. The guys are creep impeaching. Yeah. Um, I'm all for that. You yeah. Know. Um, it just, uh, you know, this what they ended up putting them down for was a, a personal crime, not a crime of government. Yeah. And it and he sh really should be held accountable to the crime of government. What's more. And this is really bizarre. There was a bunch of news last week about how Florida had set a new daily record for COVID deaths with, a, I think it was a thousand and one. Yeah. Um, but if you read the article, you find out partway down is that they had updated some reporting stuff. Oh, and really? so all of those deaths didn't happen in one day. Yeah. Now, not that it's insignificant. Yeah. But this got a whole lot of news. Well, at the same time in New York, yeah. They updated their accounting as well. Yeah. And added 12,000 deaths really? <laughs> to the tally. But that didn't make front that page didn't get news. Any news. Yeah, that's not front page news. Now, part of it could be that 1,000 is a far more believable one day death number than 12,000 at this point. Yeah. Um, but a lot of it could be is we don't like what they're doing in Florida right now. But that's now. really what it's about. I so think. we're gonna yeah. we're gonna focus on Florida. And by the way, now that cases and stuff are starting to drop in Florida, Florida's not in the news at all. Yeah, like that. It's just like so when they're when the cases are spiking, we're gonna talk about Florida all day mm -hmm. long, and not just Florida, but any of these red states yeah. that are. Active. Oh man, I should have pulled the clip. Um, I actually heard somebody uh, talking about South Dakota. They got a doctor from South Dakota on to talk about how, um, you know, COVID was overwhelming the hospitals after the Sturgis, Sturgis uh, motorcycle rally. Yeah. Um, and we talked about this before that even the CDC numbers had a very low count of cases Impacts. connected to Sturgis last year. Yeah. Uh, even though that's still brought up as a huge super spreader event. Absolutely. Um, whereas uh, Obama's um, birthday party might have been a bigger <laughs> spreader, yeah. uh, although apparently only among the lower classes of people. Not <laughs> right. The, you know. But uh, anyway, um, 
so this time around, the this doctor's on. He's talking about how um, you know there's been this rise in cases since the Sturgis thing. But he, what he slipped, he let slip out, is that they had rising cases before the Sturgis motorcycle rally. Yeah. And then the, they got a real, you know, a real bump after the Sturgis. But you can't necessarily connect that to Sturgis. Yeah. And of course, the interviewer never asked the person, "Well, how many of those people attended the Sturgis motorcycle rally?" Right. <laughs> So, um, anyway, yeah, they're, they've never, except for things like that, they've never really gone over South, uh, over, gone at South Dakota, yeah. even though South Dakota never had any restrictions. And, uh, and another thing that they let slip in that interview, um, the, the interviewer in the setup said, uh, is that they had, um, they had had their first day in South Dakota reporting zero cases. Or something like that, which means that even though all this time South Dakota has never had any restrictions at all, yeah, they had no COVID. <laughs> right. <laughs> this seems like an important point. You would think so, but yeah. um, but you you know the vaccine push continues, and uh, actually I got a clip here. Let, let me let me throw in this clip. All right. The CDC and the White House appear to be clashing over the timeline for COVID vaccine boosters. The Biden administration wants Americans to start getting the extra shots next month, but a CDC panel still isn't clear when initial vaccine effectiveness begins to diminish. Okay, so they don't know how long the vaccine lasts. Yeah. Now, the main thing that I want to point out here is they don't know how long the vaccine lasts, but they know that there are no long-term side effects. Yeah. And we, we don't know if the vaccine lasts six months, eight months, 10 months, but we know yeah. that there are no long-term side effects. Yeah. How can you know that? There's no way to know that. Like you just, you can't, like yes. there's, there's no way. This is a strange dichotomy. Yeah. Yeah. And, and to the point that they want to dose you up with even more of it. Yeah. Like, cause that's what this push is. Like, yeah. well, we, we don't know how long it lasts, but, we think you need more mm. like, cause I mean, that's really how it kind of sounds right now. <laughs> yeah. To me, it sounds like maybe you need something else. Yeah. But yeah. if you think that the vaccine is what you need, then do what you want to do. I'm, I'm not yeah. here to, I'm not here to fight against vaccines. That's not, yeah. that's not what this is about. Um, I just want people to recognize the, <laughs> the self-contradiction. Yeah. Yeah. And um, the blatant like contradiction. <laughs> yeah. Like, and um, the, you know, just to kind of prove ourselves right, that many of the claims that they've made all this time, they could not possibly know. Yeah. Yeah. That the, there's a whole lot that is still questionable about all of this, yeah. all of this, not just the vaccines. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, I just don't know what else. And then and then there's this. The federal government is now launching a civil rights investigation into five states that ban mask mandates in schools, claiming the ban violates laws that protect students' rights. Now, somebody definitely needs to explain that to me. <laughs> this, I can't imagine. This is, a, this is an upside-down world right here, um, <sighs> that somehow uh, prohibiting a mandate is a violation of rights. Yeah, like... On what planet the does I, I just can't even fathom that like the and just to point out like these places where a mandate school mandates were prohibited, yeah. um, the doesn't mean that the the children aren't yeah. allowed to wear masks. The masks aren't prohibited. It's yeah. just the forcing of wearing one that's prohibited. Yeah. It's still a personal choice. Yeah, and the federal government is looking into into a civil rights lawsuit about this. Yeah. Now, I, I imagine that the argument they're going to make is that the students have a right to a safe and healthy environment or something along those lines, yeah. um, and that this makes their environment less safe and less healthy. Now, at some point, to it me, seems like you'd have to start bringing in some data that shows that, well, which I, was, I think they'll have a hard time doing. Well, and that's kind of, that, seem, that seems like just such a high burden to mm -hmm. say that, okay, these masks are that good yeah. that we need them in, to be mandatory. Mm -hmm. Because it just seems to me, especially when you're talking about in a court of law here, like, shouldn't the standard just be astronomical? I mean, I'm no lawyer. Well, it, it's a civil suit if they bring suit. So, okay. Um, there's a lower standard. So there's standard. a lower standard. Yeah. Even then, though, it seems like the standard would still be pretty 
pretty good that you have to prove that this is that good of a thing, that yeah. you're going to mandate somebody else to do it. I think they'll have a hard time proving that it's effective at all. Well, that's my <laughs> point. That, well, that's kind of my point is that like, it's like yeah. you can't like the evidence isn't really there anyway. Yeah. So like, uh, but but they may win it. Like I mean, this the the uh, the environment we're in right now, as absurd as all of that sounds, they may still win this thing. Yeah, I you know this is like this sounds like that would be a report out of some um, old uh, horror TV series about communism. Or yeah, <laughs> something. Yeah, <laughs> like it really does. Like it, it's it sounds like it's satire. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's it's crazy, man. Yeah. Or some dystopian, like like you say, horror film or something. Yeah. Like, like Twilight, Twilight Zone. Twilight Zone. We talked about mm-hmm. Twilight Zone earlier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. feel like I'm living in it, man. Just trying to lead you there. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it I really... Too long. I, I really... But it really <laughs> does feel like at some point, like, we left reality and we're living in some kind of Twilight Zone. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's crazy. I, I couldn't identify it. I don't I mean, know. I I think it was when Trump won. I think when Trump won, like we went one direction and another group went another direction where Hillary won. Yeah. And like this, we're talking about like multi worlds kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, multi world thing. Yeah. Like there was where a there's split like there. a version of us that lives in the world where Hillary we're, won that. We're used to living the yeah. <laughs> version yeah. that Hillary won. <laughs> because in. the assumption then is that uh, the entire world was destroyed in a nuclear holocaust uh, within a few months of her taking over the presidency. Yeah, right? yeah. That, that world didn't last long with Hillary. The hell. I <laughs> yeah. promise you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident about that too. So, uh, yeah. And so we're left with what Trump left us. Yeah. <laughs> this is the world that Trump built. <laughs> this is the best of all possible worlds. Oh my God. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh man. No, if, if this, all of this is true, there has to be a world out there somewhere where a libertarian has won. Yeah, and where they, Ron Paul. Ron won. Paul in 2012 uh, like made yeah. the run and won. Yeah. Like that world has to be. Or 2008, exist. more likely. Uh, I think it, well, yeah. Maybe no, yeah. he had a better run in twenty twelve. I think he had he had more win behind this. Like he yeah, had a, but it, beating um, Obama into a second would've, term would have been tough. Uh, yeah, that <laughs> that would have been tough. But he had a better chance of the nomination in twenty twelve. Yeah, so yeah. I don't know. Uh, maybe. One of them two, he could have. Yeah. <laughs> There's a world out there where one of those two, he yeah, won. And it. we left Afghanistan 12 years ago or eight right. years ago or whatever. And yeah, all, all, all has turned out well. And we're a more profitable society. And we maybe never even had a pandemic. Or if we had COVID, nobody knew about it because it was just another flu. And yeah, just another bloop on the radar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who, who knows? I, um, yeah, I just don't. I don't know how we. I don't know how we got here exactly. Where, yeah. uh, and, and I even said before that I'm opposed to prohibiting the mandates. Yeah. Um. Now you I disagreed know, with I me disagree, on that. I disagree, and I still do. Um. Even though I get where you're coming from. Well, you know, we. I've always maintained that I want to decentralize, localized control as much as possible, and a school board is a more local control than a state governor. And I just think that if the school board decides that they want to uh, have mask mandates, that it's not the governor's place to step in and say otherwise, because it's those people that go to that school that need to argue about that if it's a problem. And, of course, I'm also on board with school choice. So if your district uh, makes a mask mandate and you don't agree with it, then I think that you should be able to take your kid to another district to go to school where they don't have a mask mandate, too. Yeah. But... All of anyway, that's fair. I think I think what the federal government's doing right now, yeah, that's where DeSantis is responsible for protecting his the, state. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that. Mm. Um, but I'm, I'll tell you, if I was in his seat, I'd be doing the same stuff. Like you got to mm. fight this thing any way you can. Yeah. It's it's that big of an evil in my mind. Yeah, and I get I I get the where you're coming from on that, but. Mm-hmm still too big of an evil yeah thing. i uh i fear that you become what you're fighting against if you start doing that you're not wrong i don't i don't think you're necessarily wrong on that but yeah. this 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 is a it's problem I'm not <laughs> well fair enough <laughs> <laughs> well uh that's as good a place as any to to end it we're we're at about our time anyway um unless you got something more to add before we no we close I think, up i think, think we pretty well hit it all man all right well um, we, uh, plan to be back in a week. In the meantime, um, follow us on Facebook, subscribe on iTunes, Podbean, YouTube, uh, 
what else do we have? There's always the website. Yeah. Um, if you've got stories or comments or anything, uh, you can always email me at Michael at the Liberty Mike. And um, Friday may kind of become our new day to. Yeah, for a little while. For, a little I, while. for those of you that have been following us for a while, you're probably used to this at this yeah. point. About twice a year, we have to shift from Thursday to Friday. Yeah, softball um, season. Yeah. So. Um, so, you know, we'll we'll do. We'll do what we can. I also yeah. might become really busy soon. Well, I'm already <clears throat> really busy with my main job. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah, but we'll we'll make it happen. I mean, we'll we'll yeah. do our best to get content out to you uh, on a weekly basis. Yeah. Um, oh, and, absolutely. And uh, we'll we'll figure it out if it's not working out. Something will something will know, happen. We'll we'll make it happen. Absolutely. Best we can. Yep. The way we always do. Yep. So <laughs> that's probably not real encouraging for some people. <laughs> anyway, uh, we plan to be back in a week um, when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later.